Your outlook on the world may very well depend on how you see yourself. Kent Harbour, associate professor at Rutgers University at Newark, says there may be something to that classic Bobby McFerrin song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Let's talk about your, your research there. What is the gist of what you're looking at? Okay, Brian. So what we're looking at is how what we call psychosocial resources. These are things like having friends, feeling good about yourself, uh, feeling hope or optimism. How they affect the way you literally see challenging things in the world, things that could be scary or disturbing or threatening. And you make a comparison between those who have what you call psychological resources and yep. those who don't. What, what does that mean? Very good. So, for example, um, some people have many friends, some people are more isolated. Some people feel good about themselves, some people feel less good about themselves. Turns out these resources are very powerful, have powerful effects even on our bodies. So, one of the dramatic studies showed that after having a heart attack, a year afterwards, men who had social support were four times more likely to survive that next year than those lacking it. In fact, the absence of social support is considered as much a health risk as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Wow. So Now, does that impl apply to people who go through other life changes, divorce, or uh, uh, their kids, or the empty nest thing, the kids leave the house, those kinds of life things? It could be, and those are ma major changes. What's important is people have a variety of different kinds of resources, and what's really good is that these resources are, are fungible. If you lack one, let's say you are relatively isolated for some reason. If you feel good about yourself, you can draw upon that. Mm -hmm. so, so what we were interested in, in, in these studies, that it's clear that these resources have powerful effects on your body, even at the level cellularly. People who have more resources have higher T cells, meaning that their immune system is more robust. Wow. So, so people who are happier may uh, recover more easier or faster from illness? Is that, is that the objective? Well, that's, happiness can be, in itself can be a resource, but you can actually, for example, you can have, not necessarily be happy today or whatever, mm -hmm. but you can have lots of friends in your life. We can feel good about yourself, which is separate from being happy, just sort of a basic level like, I'm okay. It doesn't mean that you're narcissistic. Mm -hmm. Basically, though, you're on your own side. You're your own buddy. You feel like you've got faith in yourself, okay. or you feel like other people are there to having your back. Those are things that seem to really matter. Now, among the people that you're studying or mm -hmm. have studied for this, mm -hmm. uh, how did you pick those people? I, I mean, did you have people who are suffering from depression, or <laughs> to, I mean, how did that work? So, so for the first study, okay, and what we wanted to see is clearly these resources are having an effect on how your body copes with stressors. Mm -hmm. We want to see is, do they affect the way you literally see challenging things in the world? So for our first study, we just got undergraduates at the University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. The reason is that one of my colleagues, uh, Dennis Prophet, who is a researcher on the psychology of vision, mm -hmm. has done nice studies on how people see, for example, how steep a hill is if they're in good physical shape or mm -hmm. bad physical shape. And it turns out if you're younger, if you're in good shape, if you're not exhausted from, from doing something else, you'll see a hill is less steep. I can use something funny with my hands here, but people exaggerate how steep they see hills. So a hill that's really this steep, we all almost double how steep we see it. People who are out of shape see it as more steep. If they're older, more steep. We want to see, okay, thus the change in your physical state changes how you see the hill. What about your social situation? All we did is we just grabbed students at the university who are either alone or with a friend. And we basically said, like, here's a candy bar if you do the study for us. And that was enough. Mm -hmm. And we just asked them, how steep is this hill? And we asked them to tell us in, in geometric degrees with zero being flat, 90 to being you know, a, a cliff, and anywhere in between. And we also gave them a little device that just does what my hands are doing now. So open or shut this device to tell us how steep the hill looks to you. People who were with a friend saw the hill as less steep. Wow. The longer they knew their friend, the less steep the hill looked to them. Now you did something similar with tarantulas. Explain how that worked. Fair enough. So here we want to look at different resources, which is, as you mentioned before, you know, self-esteem or, or self-worth. We want to see if how people's feelings about themselves affected how close they saw something scary. So it turns out other research has shown that when people encounter spiders, they tend to see them as looming closer than they actually are. What we did is we had a study where people first came in and they thought about their best personal success their worst failure, or as a control condition, doing laundry, which usually doesn't make people feel good or bad about themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they put their chin in a optometrist's chin rest, 
and they had below them a fishing reel. They turned the fishing reel, and a clear plastic cart moved towards their face. Their job is to say, how close is the plastic cart? For half the subjects, there was nothing in the cart except for a little cat toy, which was not threatening. For others, it had Voont. Voont is a red kneed tarantula, a live tarantula. So feeling good about yourself or bad about yourself or neutral had no effect on distance estimates to the neutral objects, the cat toy. But it did affect distance objects, uh, distance perceptions to the tarantula. Those who felt good about themselves, who thought about their best successes, were remarkably accurate. They're about a half inch on average off the actual distance. Mm -hmm. Those who thought about their worst personal failure saw the tarantula at least six inches closer than it actually was. Wow, interesting stuff. Yeah. Let me ask you, to, the, the, I mm. want to cut to the chase here. What mm. do you think, uh, what would you hope people go take away from this conversation? That, well, my outlook is going to affect my health. Is that, is that really the bottom line? Well, clearly that's, that can be the case. Um, so people who have more efficacy, for example, or who have more friends, they tend to have more resistance to, to illness. That's true. But what we're interested in here is like, what kind of world do you see? So day to day, if someone lacks support, they feel bad about themselves, they might be living in a world in which scary, creepy things appear closer, that heights seem greater, that hills seem more difficult to climb, and so they live subjectively in a world that's more challenging, that's more disturbing. So if we all get more friends, we'll all live in a better world. Well, <laughs> <laughs> or an easier world to live in. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Always a pleasure. Insightful stuff. Thank you, Brian.